Okay, uh, first thing off, um, we are going to make the front wet molded part first. Um, not sure which way I should put this in. I think I'll put this at the top. Um, that's a good question. That's the other thing you have to take into consideration. Uh, the wet molded friction sheath, uh, your tool or knife is going to stay in there by friction. You kind of got to decide which way you want to put it in. Um, I didn't even really think about that. I think I'll do it like that. So this will be at the top. All right. This piece of leather you cut out doesn't necessarily have to be perfect because it's going to be wet molded, it's going to be trimmed. Um, so what we're going to do, I think I'm going to make this a total of four inches. Sounds good. So just draw yourself a straight line. And what you want to do, your lines, the sides, or I would say the width of the leather, make it about at least an inch and a half wider than your tool or your knife because you're going to be pushing it down and molding it. Also decide on how far you want to stick out. I'm not sure if you guys can get a good angle on that. I'm going to let about three quarters of an inch stick out. So what we're going to do, again like I said this doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be wet molded. Just draw yourself a line around the same uh, inch and a half Just like that, that'll be fine. And then uh, we're going to cut this out. Get your razor blade. And uh, I'll come back when this is all cut out. Okay, so we got our, our leather piece cut out. Um, as you can see, fairly simple. It's just a piece just to go around it. Um, the one you obviously want to make sure the top is nice and flat, unless you want to start doing some curves and designs. If this is your first time, I would stick with it being straight. And then this part doesn't have to be even. You might be able to see some of the lines. It's no biggie. Like I said, we're going to wet mold it, and then it's going to be uh, cut anyway. So. You know, it's that simple. Just cut yourself out a piece like that. And next thing we're going to do, I'm going to give myself a stitching groove at the top with your uh, stitching groover. Uh, that is not necessarily, I'm doing that purely for cosmetics. Um, if you want to do it, you can. Uh, next, definitely, definitely do this. Take your edge beveler, and we're going to bevel just the top where it's going to be sticking out because um, you're not going to be able to do that once this is bent and molded you're not going to be able to use your edge beveler there so we're going to do that right now uh, the other thing I'm going to do also is slick the edge a little bit um, this edge here I'm going to normally I like to slick edges after it's already dyed um, dye does not penetrate a slicked edge very well but again since this is going to be curved and molded it's not going to be that easy to slick it. So I'm going to take your little bit of water here. We're just going to do a little bit. Uh, take your edge slicker. You can pick these up at Tandy Leather. Pretty cheap I think. Uh, yeah, so that's fine. We're just going to do a little bit. Okay, so next thing, that's all you need to do uh, before you wet mold it. That's pretty uh, simple right there. Not a whole lot you need to do. Uh, just cut yourself out a piece of leather about an inch and a half around the tool. Um, cut it out. Give it a uh, stitching groove line there if you want. Bevel the edges and then slick them. That takes about five minutes. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to soak this in some water, get yourself a small thing of water, and we're going to dunk it in there. And we're going to let that sit there for probably about five minutes. You want to get that weather, leather nice and wet and soaked uh, so you'll be able to mold it very easily. 
Uh, do not use hot water. Use cold or room temperature. Hot water can actually make your leather shrink. Uh, you don't want that to happen. Or you, you don't want it cooking either in hot water. So uh, just make sure it's cold water, room temperature. And we'll come back here in about five minutes and we'll start wet melt molding. Alright guys, we're back. Alright, now we're going to take our leather. It's been in here about five minutes. Uh, it's nice and malleable. Um, and take that out. And what I do is just put on some paper towels and just soak up the excess because you don't want it dripping. You just want it damp. Get off all that excess. And we can start wet molding right away. Um, you guys can laugh at me all you want. My wet molding tool is a baby spoon that has black duct tape around it. Um, they do sell molding spoons or tools bone at the leather store. Um, when my daughter was a baby we had probably about half a dozen of these. It has a very very nice smooth plastic uh, coating on it and I wrap that in black duct tape and it just feels great and this is what I use. Um, you guys can use whatever you want. Alright, so let's get right down to molding. Uh, put your tool there. I'm going to stick some leather underneath on top of it and you just got to decide how much you want to stick out. And this just, there's no uh, science to this. You just kind of mold. Start molding with your fingers start using the spoon going around this takes some time um, wet molding never works for you it always works against you the leather can be a pain in the butt but you just gotta keep going and going until you start getting the shape you want probably shaking the table. Alright, I'm going to come back here. So we're kind of getting the, the basic shape already as you can see. Um, uh, we're going to keep doing this for a while and then once I have the basic shape I'm going to stick it in front of a hair dryer and we're going to dry, uh, dry it about halfway and then come back and, and mold it again. So uh, I'm going to turn the camera off right now. I'm going to see how much more of this I can get. All right, one thing we're going to do here, once you start really getting the shape you want, what we're going to do is we're going to make some cuts like this. And this helps the, um, this helps the molding down here at the bottom. Now, you don't want to go too far because, you know, you're going to need to leave about um, a quarter to three-eighths, whatever you want to do for your stitching. So... I usually do at least half inch to three quarters out like that. And you can actually take that out. We're just going to cut some grooves around here. And this is going to help the leather scrunch up a little bit more. got our basic shape. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in front of the hair dryer uh, for about, um, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, however long it takes for uh, you start seeing the color come back and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll start molding it some more. Um, yeah, definitely using the hair dryer is very handy, helps, helps it dry faster and will help harden it a little bit, which is good because we're going to want it stiff. So, uh, if you're going along with this video right now, go ahead, stick it in your in front of the hair dryer somewhere on the counter. Uh, put it on, put the hair dryer on a low setting, and um, uh, when it kind of starts turning color, 
Also, when you put it in front of the hair dryer, every couple of minutes, turn it around so you kind of dry it evenly. And we'll go do that, and then uh, we'll come back and mold some more. All right, guys. Uh, I'm back here, and um, I had this in front of the hair dryer for about five minutes. Uh, turned it a couple of times so it'll uh, dry a little evenly. I don't know if you can notice there's a little bit. It's dried a little bit. I'm probably going to do that again. But it's definitely a lot stiffer, as you can see. And so we can kind of uh, do even a better wet molding, and we'll just continue that. Sorry if the camera is shaking. Once this stiffens up a bit, it's a lot easier to get to mold down around here, which is the most stubborn part to do around the bottom of your tool or your knife. So, if you're following along and you're wet molding, just keep doing this till you get the form you want. I'm not going to show the entire process because this could take me about 20 minutes. But uh, I'm going to do this for a little bit more. I'm going to keep molding it and then I'm going to stick it back in front of the hair dryer again. And then we'll continue. Alright guys, we uh... I've had this in front of the hair dryer for another five minutes. You can see it really changing back color. And it's almost ready to be permanently dried. I'm just going to go over it one more time <clears throat> to get this exactly how I want it. think I think that's about good um, you can see the back um, yeah I'm happy with that um, so this Leatherman's fairly small um, I'll measure it it's only four inches long the leather I'm using is fairly thick I believe it's around eight to nine ounce eight to nine ounce I think which is it's fairly thick for a, a very small tool like this um, you can keep wet molding as much as you want if you got a knife that has a belt clip you can mold around whatever tool you're using to try to get the design the thinner a leather you use the crisper it's going to look and the more designs will stand out on the tool through the leather um, like I said, this is just for me. It's a simple Leatherman. There's really nothing around it that you're going to get some uh, designs on the outside of the leather. Uh, so this is pretty much all you're going to get is just this little, uh, it's just this shape. Um, so, I mean, you're welcome to keep wet molding all you want. Make it nice and crisp. Use a thinner leather. It's up to you. Um, you may have to uh, experiment a little bit. Um, experimenting's good. So that's it. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to put this back in front of the hair dryer for a good 15, 20 minutes until it's completely dry. And then uh, we'll start. We're going to trim it up and make the back and go from there. All right, guys. So the sheath pouch is completely dry or uh, mostly dry and came out really good. I like it. It's got a nice, uh, nice fit to it. All right. So what we gotta do now? We need to trim our excess off of here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a metal stylus. And what we're gonna do is just we're just gonna draw a line with it, basically just scoring the leather in a way. And uh, the best way to do this is by hand, really. I guess I could actually use a straight edge on these sides, but. Um, I'm just going to score it around. It's alright if you're going a little bit wide. You can always take it to a sander and shave off some excess, which I, I just might do that. So I'm just going to score this around and we'll cut this out with uh, the razor blade. 
Okay, so I scored the line. I don't think you guys can see it very well, so I'm just going to go ahead, take your razor blade, and what I do is I'll just go around the sheath one time, just scoring a line, and then we'll go back and, uh, and we'll cut it out. Kind of went off there, that's all right. We can sand it down. All right, so here it is uh, after I cut it out. And it's just a little bit too much on there. I'm gonna go take it to the sander and uh, just grind it down a little bit more. Um, make it a little bit uh, thinner, make these edges thinner. Alright, so I got this trimmed down where I want. Um, now what we're going to do, we got to make the uh, the back side, the back side and the belt loop. Um, this is how I do it. Uh, if you guys can figure out a better way, more power to you. Uh, so the diameter, I guess you would say the diameter of the sheath is just about almost exactly two and a quarter inches. So what I do is I'm going to trace this around. So this is going to be basically an identical pattern on the back of this pouch. Now what we want to do is have another identical piece because it's going to fold over. Now when you fold it over you're going to want, you don't want to just put this up here like this and then just trace right off of that because this leather piece the backing is going to fold over. You have to take into account um, the measurement of how much you want for the fold over back. And what I do is I usually do about anywhere from half to three quarters of an inch. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to have some of the leather come up this way. You want like a, at least a quarter inch or so coming up because it's going to go back. Relieve some stress, take some stress off of the stitching. You'll you'll see that later. So I normally don't don't go too high, but I think I'm going to go. Eh, I think I'll go three quarters of an inch. So we're going to draw three quarters of an inch up here. Just draw those lines straight. All right. So what I did was I cut out just the lower half. Here's your sheath, and I cut it all the way up to the three-quarter mark, just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold this over, but we're only going to fold it halfway in that three-quarter mark, okay? Which is why graph paper comes in extremely handy. It's easy to line up the lines. All right. So what we're going to do, we're just going to fold that over and then trace around the existing template. Apparently I can't talk and draw at the same time, so. And flip that back, cut that out, there's your whole back template right there. And I'll be back after we cut that out. Okay, we have the template cut out. Now all you do, just trace around it and cut it out with scissors or uh, your razor blade. And this will be our last piece, the backing piece with the belt loop. All right, so here's our uh, our back piece. It'll be the belt loop, and we're just gonna take your razor blade and cut it out. Okay, we have our uh, back piece cut out. 
this is where the pouch is going to go right that, like that and then the leather piece will be looped around and we'll stitch it and that will be part of the belt loop and so really the only thing we're going to do right now we're not going to bevel any edges on this we're just going to kind of bend it over real good kind of get the formation the form of it so if you notice you can kind of see how this all lines up and you can see how much leather is right there for the loop that's what you want which actually the three quarters of an inch it only came out to be about a quarter and a half uh, three eighths so that way your leatherman slides in there you've got just a little bit backing back there that's perfect hope you, hope you guys can see that um, so really the only thing we're going to do next uh, like I said we're not going to bevel any edges on this we're just going to glue this on the back we're going to glue these together and then after the glue dries then we're going to go around and sand it flush and then you're going to have to sand this to uh, match it up and uh, that's pretty much it we'll glue this sand it all make sure it looks good and then we'll drill the stitching holes and then we will uh, dye it and almost there all right time to glue here's my glue this is wood glue most of you know I use wood glue for veg tan, just for the veg tan. And if you're wondering why it's in Tupperware, it's because the, uh, the original nozzle on the wood glue broke, and so I couldn't close it, so I had to put it in this. Now I just got to dip my finger in it, but we'll be careful. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to dip the, we're going to put the glue on this side, and i got to use my finger if you guys have the, I'm just going to smear it around here real good. And then we will uh, hold it together with clothespins. All right. Make sure you wash your hands. And then we're just going to simply press this on. Line it up the best you can. Surprised I don't have any glue seeping out. And then just put your clothes pins all the way around. All right, so here's what we got. We're going to let this sit for about 30, 45 minutes. And then we will sand up the edges and do the stitching holes. All right, guys, so... Our uh, whoops, our sheath pouch is done gluing. I took the clothes pins off, so we're going to take it to the sander here, and we're going to even out the edges, and that's what we're going to do. If you notice, right here and right there, we sand it in a little bit. So this is where it's just going to be a little bit of trial and error. You're just going to fold this over to where you want it and kind of just sand off what you want. Um, just even it out. Um, we're just going to go over it just back and forth a few times and then keep keep checking and see if it uh, how it lines up. So we got everything sanded real nice. Now we're going to use the edge beveler. First we're going to do the top part here. And then we'll go ahead and do
and then the whole bottom. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we just edge beveled all the edges all around here, all around there. And I just did a quick test with the Leatherman. Uh, which one do I have this? It's in there nice and snug. Uh, it'll be even tighter after we stitch it. Alright, now I'm going to take my stylus and what we're going to do is we're going to mark the stitching holes. Uh, first one, I'm going to put the first stitching hole on the stitching groove line that I made. And in this case I can use my hole punch and I'm just going to use this just to mark them. Just kind of get an even quarter of an inch the way down. And then you can kind of go by hand about a quarter inch around. And when you come in the middle to meet, that's where you're just going to kind of hope they line up, do the best you can. And that worked out pretty good. Alright, so we, um, hopefully you can see this. I got all the uh, stitching holes marked and we're just going to use the drill press. Uh, get yourself a block of wood, put some paper on it, and we'll start drilling away. Maybe you can see that over here. Okay, so we got all the holes stitched, or I mean, uh, we got all the holes drilled, the stitching holes drilled, starting to come together look good. All right, now, how do we put this back piece on? Well, this is where we're just going to, I forgot my toothpick, what you got to figure out on your own is how far, because what we're going to do, we're going to stitch in three places. Maybe someone's figured this out better than me, I don't know. We're going to stitch about here, here, and then fold this back, and then we'll stitch the rest with the belt loop on there. So the only thing you need to determine for yourself is how much belt loop you want. I wear an inch and a half belt, so I'm only going to stitch um, probably down to there, maybe there. So anyway, how I mark these holes is I'm just going to fold this over like this and I'm just going to stick the toothpick down there through the holes and mark where to punch punch them out alright guys I kind of skipped this step or I didn't show it uh, putting these holes on the back belt loop. Uh, what you're going to do, which I tried to explain, you just fold this over, get it to where you want, and poke something through these holes to make an impression on here to mark which ones, and then punch them out. And then like I said, I'm going to stitch this in three sections. I'm going to stitch it here, here, and then we'll stitch it, then we'll stitch this. And obviously the reason we do that is because if or you can't stitch this whole thing at one time you could probably get away with no I mean you can't maybe you can't I don't know I haven't figured it out anyway so we're gonna dye it we're gonna do a couple coats of dye a couple coats of finish and then slick edges stitch it up almost done alright guys I'm using a uh, EcoFlow professional black dye that's actually a water stain and always do the back side first that's what I do first and we're going to dye this a couple times and give it a couple coats of finish make sure you get some of that dye in the holes you don't always want to see veg tan in there you want to see it being all black it makes it a lot more professional looking and definitely gonna have to make sure you dye the inside a little bit you don't have to go that far down 
but you want to dye a little bit of the inside of the sheath or pouch so you can uh, so you don't see the veg tan. All right, guys, we're going into the oven, 170 degrees. Make sure you got a baking pan with a towel on there, and then put the uh, whatever you're making on there, and get it in the oven for. Make sure you prop the door open. Just like that. I use this little uh, office clip just to prop the door open a couple of inches. 170, five or 10 minutes. And then we'll take it out and slick the edges. All right, so just did our, uh, it's all dyed black. See that? And so now, next, we're going to slick the edges. Get yourself some water, your sponge, and we're going to slick this back edge. And then, as far as as far as this part. We're going to slick that with the flat part. Alright, we slicked all the edges. I uh, even went over this, just rubbed it a little bit, uh, smoothed it out. So we slicked all the edges, and so we're going to add some finish, EcoFlow Professional Gloss Finish. And same as before, we'll do the back side first. And then, same as before, we'll pop this in the oven for about five minutes. Um, when you take it out of the oven, it's also a good idea to take the hair dryer to it a little bit. Um, but yeah, we'll pop it back in the oven, and then we're done. We'll stitch it up. Okay, so I just got, that, got this out of the oven. I let it cool down. I'll give it a quick buff. Uh, so I'm going to take my little flat head thing I got here, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hammer in some uh, stitching grooves, which I guess I could use my other one, but um, this one, this actually works, in my opinion, a little bit better. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some stitching grooves around here and around there, because that's what's going to be showing. We don't have to do them on the, well, actually, we are going to do some on the inside right there. Okay, so we got the stitching grooves in there. I'm not sure if you can see that. So this is just hand pound, pounded in around there. There you go. There's a good picture of it. Step here around this side. And just a few holes on there. This is where the belt will be sliding in and out, so you don't want them the stitching sticking out too far. This is going to be in the back up on your pants. So we got the grooves there and here. So it's time to stitch it up. Alrighty. So we've got the first two places stitched up. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me see if I can. Sorry about that. Right here we stitched it to there. Same on the other side. Stitched it right there. See it on the back. Just stitched it from there to there, and then the remainder we're going to stitch on the belt loop, and it will be done. All right, guys, I'm out in my shop. Uh, I got some better lighting on the pouch. There it is, all done, finished. All stitched up, beautiful for the virgin test. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Whoops. Excuse me. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. I'll take some pictures of this, put it at the end of the video, uh, get some clear images of it. Um, 
Yeah, I hope that helped you. I'm sorry I didn't go into too much detail about the stitching. I have that in some, a couple of other videos. Um, but, uh, yeah, there you go. Very simple. Not really hard to do that at all. Um, once you get the hang of it, uh, the wet molding can be tough at first to learn, but yeah, that works perfect. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to leave your comments as usual. And thanks for watching my videos as always, guys. Have a good one out there.